Hello, everybody. Welcome back for another video. Hope you're all doing well and that you're all having a fantastic day. Leaving a like, leaving a comment, or subscribing helps out the channel immensely. Don't forget to check out my other channel, Money Rules. New video is going to be appearing today as well. And without the ado, Let's jump right into it. I'm going to move backwards and then I'm going to move forwards to give you the entire picture. U.S. inflation for the month of September apparently came in at around 8.2%, which exceeded market expectations of 8.1%, which is nonsensical, per the Consumer Price Index report. Bitcoin fell nay, dare I say, collapsed to a nearly exactly $18,000 following the data release. While the latest CPI report shows the fourth month of declining inflation, <laughs> declining, it is still notable that CPI continues to exceed market expectations. Thus, continued rate hikes could and probably will be coming from the Federal Reserve, which tends to drive instruments like risk assets and Bitcoin to lower prices at the moment or rather working backwards like I said we finally received the news we were talking about this on Monday it was going to be a very big week that was not simply just a title that was exactly what was going to happen we were going to receive news as to how high inflation is was our whatever word you want to put there some of them aren't correct and apparently it came out over 8%, which we were all talking about before. Remember we were saying yesterday, apparently if the number came in at 7.9%, people were going to be exuberant and quite happy. I'm not sure what that 0.02% uh, difference makes. Anyway, the point is, um, yeah, prices fell quite dramatically. It says Bitcoin and U.S. inflation for September worse than expected. Pain for stock and cryptos. Massive volatility. In Bitcoin, as U.S. inflation clocks in at two percentile points. So as it stands right now, I believe today we are supposed to get some other type of uh, information as to how the economy is going and where things might go. It appears evident that we are definitely going to be receiving some type of... Um, continuation of interest rates from the Federal Reserve moving forward. For those of you not looking at the screen, it says U.S. inflation is sticky. Okay. At 8.2%. What's next for Bitcoin? I guess apparently this. So it says dump and pump because everything collapsed yesterday. I, I posted this on Twitter. I was asking people if they were going to be buying the dip because it was a, it was a mighty, mighty dip. Uh, Bitcoin fell down to $18,000. And then out of nowhere, everything began to pump at the exact same time. It says Ethereum price pumps and looks ready for another leg higher over $1,400. Bitcoin fell down to $18,000 and is currently at $19,600 at the exact same time. And one of the most popular price news stories of the day. It says XRP is leading the crypto market recovery. What's behind the rally? There are two things. One of them is uh, good and the other one is gooder. So the first thing is, is basically a lot of people are looking into, of course, the lawsuit that's been going on fraudulently for the last two years by the corrupt SEC, excuse my language. Uh, uh, and basically, uh, we have indications that, we went over this already as well, that Brad Garlinghouse, the CEO of Ripple, believes that the lawsuit could end by spring of next year. It's kind of just a time frame that he threw out there. And everyone, I mean, it seems believable. This, this case cannot go on forever, especially when the SEC is providing no information for anything. I believe a day or two ago, I, be, I think the judge ruled that they have to unseal the Hinman documents, uh, which is, I believe, an email that says exactly why they chose Bitcoin and Ethereum to not be securities, but excluded every other coin 
in the market. The part two of this news that's been flying around for those of you not looking at the screen. It says breaking. Ripple versus SEC settlement could maybe happen on or before the 15th of November. Right. So that is a totally different movement from spring as opposed to about a month away from now. There are a lot of lawyers who are constantly looking into the case, who are constantly going over all of the things that are happening and basically representing it in in layman's terms, if you will, so that we can all understand exactly what's happening. And apparently, um, the SEC only has a couple of days left to file another motion for denial, basically trying to stop Ripple from doing something else in the court case. And allegedly, if they don't file for this thing, uh, the court case will then come to an end in some sort of legal terms way that will basically allow the entire thing to, you know, for a judgment to be filed uh, in whichever direction the judge decides to do it. So other coins are up right now. Bitcoin's up by three. I think Ethereum is up by four. XRP is one of the very few coins that is up by nine point something percent, nearly 10%. And I assume it's just off the optimism of this finally ending because it should have never happened in the first place. On top of that as well, it says the case for a powerful rally in the stock market is building. This is something that is being echoed and has been echoed for the last couple of, I want to say maybe just around two weeks. But now we're hearing more and more of it as we get to this point in Uh, everyone realizing that the interest rates will not be risen forever. They will have to go back to the old system. They cannot get inflation under control. Once again, I mentioned this before, it is a going to be a very interesting time in our lives where the only people who are going to be able to make really good money are people who are in markets. Uh, it's not expected that we're going to see a stock market rally for a month. No. We've been going down for an entire year. We are probably going to have a multi-year bull market in stocks. And if that's the case, we will have roughly the same exact thing in the cryptocurrency space as well. I've been watching a lot of documentaries and videos online on YouTube. Not only about the already there retirement crisis, but also the money that people don't have now. The... the people being laid off and all this other stuff, and I think it's going to get really intense really fast. The only other, I can't even say the term saving grace, it's more of a, uh, we saw during 2020 and 2021 where people didn't have their normal jobs or were stuck at home, we were all there. Uh, Basically, a lot of people were looking for new ways to make money, and a lot of people began to pump their money into the stock market, into the crypto market. So they made money in this way, and that might be the new way to do it because once we get to a 15 20% inflation level, uh, you're going to be hard-pressed to go to your boss and ask him, hey, inflation's at 15%. Can I have a 19% raise? They're going to look at you like you're absolutely insane. It says, U.S. stocks soar on a wild day for Wall Street. Yeah, it's it's a little... It's a little weird because not not a lot of people, you know, we just all kind of assumed that things would be going the opposite way. And to be fair, they did. Let's be completely honest. Bitcoin was at 19,000 and then it fell down to 18,000 and now it's at 19,600. So there was a definite uh, shock and fall there. Stock futures are higher ahead of Friday's big bank earnings. I guess there's a huge amount of optimism there as to exactly how much money they've made, what they think is going on. Banks are openly optimistic at this point about what the Fed is going to do. And they're one of the main entities who keeps calling for the end of a bear market or some type of a heavy movement upward uh, once a lot of this is actually resolved. So yeah, we got there. We moved from the uh, what happened before to where we currently are now. We got inflation news. It's still very high. Uh, Something else was also terrible. Price has completely collapsed. About four hours later, everything began to pump back up. Uh, stocks and crypto included. And yeah, that's all the price news that we have right now. It's all in the green. It's all looking pretty rosy, at least for right now. Um, I would ask you to not hold your breath and understand that 
the people who caused us to have inflation are still going to lie to us that they're trying to get it under control. They're probably going to continue raising interest rates, as they've said before. We can only assume that what they said is going to happen. Uh, we probably will only see one more rate hike this year and maybe one at the beginning of the year. But after that, yeah. So if you bought the dip, congratulations. I tip my digital hat to thee. Here's a little golf clap because it was a well-timed buy. Yeah, that's all the price news that we have right now. And yeah, let's move on. A lot of the rest of the of, of the cryptocurrency news, once again, is just... I don't want to use the word nonsense. It's just weird sense. Yeah, I'll say weird sense. Leading cryptocurrency exchange Binance has announced its latest quarterly Binance coin burn. And they destroyed more than 2 million tokens worth half a billion dollars at the time of writing. According to Binance's announcement, a total of... $2 million worth of Binance token. No, 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 wrong. That's wrong. 2 million Binance tokens. There we go. Have been burned as part of the latest quarterly burn with a total of 4,000 Binance coin coming from Pioneer's burn program. Am I supposed to know what that is? Okay. In which Binance counts as burned Binance tokens that users... I'm, I'm tired of reading all this. That, th this sounds ridiculous. That users have lost after mistakenly sent them to unrecoverable addresses and cover their losses with Binance coin. All right. The point is, this was very popular news. This happens... It says quarterly, but I think it's more than quarterly now, or am I missing something? I know that they automated their, their coin burn... Uh, and this is why you see a lot of other cryptocurrencies kind of uh, doing the same as far as a coin burn. It's worked out exceptionally well for Binance Coin, which got started around 2017, 2018, whenever the crypto exchange came about. There were 200 million Binance Coin. They announced that they would have a coin burn until there are just 100 million. And they used to have to, I think it was done manually. Like someone had to enter in the numbers or whatever, you know, mechanism, yada, yada, yada. But now I believe it's done automatically. Uh, and everyone's like, woo, or, or, or something like that. So this always makes very popular news. I think any time that, you know, just from logical sake, any time thus far that we've seen that there has been a coin burn for any coin. It could be for Shiba Inu, Binance Coin, Terra Luna Classic, XRP, uh, Ethereum becoming deflationary with all the coin burn yesterday. Uh, it always ends up making the popular news. So, cool. They did what they said they were going to do. So he, that's a huge... It's half a billion dollars being burned at, at just one time. Uh, I wonder exactly... Because I'm pretty certain... Never mind. Well, basically, I was going to say, like, I wonder exactly how high this coin could go or will be in the future. As far as, I'm pretty sure at some point this coin was like $6, and now it's like 200 something during the bear market. So it's kind of like a, you know, I feel like it has a lot more room to grow. I never got any. It was just more like a, cool, you know, I can't buy every coin. It's kind of ridiculous. That's the Binance burned half a billion dollars worth of Binance token coins. Wonderful. Yeah. Let's move on. Next up, and this is not crypto news, but this was one of the most popular news stories of the day. I wish I was joking. I am not. It says, it's fair to say that nobody is more excited about Meta's future metaverse than Mark Zuckerberg. Note his utter delight when... Uh, earlier this week, he announced one more feature coming soon that's probably the most requested feature on their roadmap. He rode legs, he said. I think everyone has been waiting for this. And then there's like a tweet for it right there. So from what I've gathered, what I've understood from all of this, uh, is that a lot of people who have been testing or looking at or watching videos of Facebook's metaverse... Apparently, the avatars kind of just float. And people are like, hey, where the legs at? And they made a huge announcement announcing that they were going to be adding legs to their avatars. This is news because apparently people were like, oh, the legs are animated. 
And that's not the feature that they're actually going to be able to do in the metaverse. Because apparently it shows them jumping and dancing. Who works for this company? Why would you show people something that's not going to be a feature in the actual... Like imagine I made TMI-verse. And I show you a, a, a 60 second trailer and it's people flying around with wings and everyone has firepower and you can, you know, go hunting in the depths of the ocean and you're like riding on humpback whales and you are conjuring magical spells and you have four legs and you can climb up walls and you play the game and it's just you sitting in a room looking, looking at pictures. I don't understand why they keep doing this or what they why would you show off something it looks like he's about to start break dancing why would you show off something that's not going to be in the actual metaverse it just doesn't make any sense who thought in the first place have you ever seen the first you must have the the first iterations of of what their avatars were going to look like they look like big lego people like there was just no definition to them anywhere they had no shape they had no form they looked like they couldn't move but every single time, why am I getting annoyed at this? I'm, I'm not going to be using this platform. Anyway, this was, this was very popular uh, crypto news. Uh, n- like, not joking. Like, this was kind of all over the place. I assume it's the, the long stretch of Facebook, face, Facebook, Facebook to Metaverse to Meta to using crypto or somewhere around there. I'm not really sure. Oh boy. So why? And there's uh, whatever. So that's the uh Mark Zuckerberger Meta Horizon uh note that's not at all what it's going to look like. Why not why not just you could have simply just shown yourself as an avatar just simply walking towards the camera and that would have been more than enough. You had to show them fuck almost cursed. Pop locking for no it's just so dumb. I, I don't get it. What kind of marketing is this? Who behind the scenes was like, this makes so much sense? Do you see this image? She's like near a jump kick, wearing heels. That's the... No, that's not at all how it's going to look like news. I, I just don't get it. Just... just Make a new company. Try again. It's just not working. All right, let's move on. Also, in news that people tried to make news, but this really, I don't think, should have been news because it was quite obvious that this was going to happen. A couple of two months ago, Binance announced that on their platform that they had had uh, many different uh, stable coins. They had Tether and, and Mether and Heather and all the other coins. But they announced that they were going to be getting rid of like 16 of the other stable coins. And basically, I, I believe only having Tether and the Binance US dollar on their platform. Why are they doing this? I assume because they're Binance and they wanted people to only trade into their stable coin because that's how they would make the most monies. So the news is, is that Bitcoin's trading volume on the Binance US dollar stable coin has surged by over 80%. Why, you might ask, has that happened? Because they took away all the other stable coins on their platform and now they only have the Binance US dollar. So hear me out here. If people are going to be trading into a stable coin on Binance, say it with me, they would probably only be doing it into Binance coin or Binance stable coin. So like I said, this was news, but it shouldn't have been news because it was like evident that this was probably going to end up taking place. If you have no, if you have no other where to go, like if you're walking in and out of your house every single morning through a door, it's because you only have the door to go in and out of. That's the, there was also a lot of other Binance news. I simply don't have it here. I'm not sure why today was Binance Day. You know, they're, they're also raising money and they gave money to someone else and then they got money from something else and then they made more money and... Money appeared under the bed. That's the Binance stablecoin conversion news. Let's move on. Also in, I guess, I I would never do this. Uh, MetaMask users in the United States. Wait, wait, wait. In the United States, and guess which two states are not a part of that. We'll have an easier way to purchase their crypto. 
thanks to an integration with ACH. Um, on the 13th of October, Sardine, or Sar Zardina, I have no idea how to pronounce her name, a financial platform, off or human, <laughs> platform offering instant ACH settlements, confirmed a partnership with Consensus to allow MetaMask users in the United States to purchase cryptocurrencies with their bank accounts from the wallet's user interface. Uh, ba -da -ba -ba -da -ba, and then talk about the funding and how much money they made, yada, yada, yada. So once again, if you didn't get it, uh, it's, it's, it's all 50 states except for two. It's always the same. It's Hawaii and New York. I will never, and I, and I hope I never understand why, why it's always those two that are excluded and why it's not simply the United States in, in, in its entirety at one time. Uh, but yeah, I have a little bit of a, it's not a phobia. It's more of a, I don't want to touch it up. As far as like linking my bank accounts to things that are partially Web3 and or DeFi, I know I, that, that none of that sounds sounds nice to me at all. I mean, it's a, it's a cool new way. I know other people before who've used other things like this and found it quite easy uh, with their debit and credit cards to be able to like buy into crypto or get something that they wanted through a, you know, some type of a banking integration to something Web3 or whatever the case might be, all those other things. But no, it's not for me. I don't want my stuff all over the place in every single, like, my my banking information doesn't have to be in MetaMask. It's already on my bank. So I don't, you know, I can buy through my cards or my bank account Already, I don't feel the need to have that information integrated because what if at some point, what if, now here we go, what if MetaMask has a hack or an exploit because these things keep happening all the time and then out of the million people who are using the service, let's say 38,000 of them have their information taken and it's your bank details. Yeah, see, it doesn't sound too nice. So, I would prefer crypto kind of just stay in its own lane, in its own side, away from the traditional system, but apparently that's not going to be the case anymore. That's the MetaMask users in the United States, except for two places, will be able to purchase cryptocurrencies thanks to an integration with ACH News. I'm sure somebody's going to use it. It's not going to be me. All right. Let's move on. Also in, why why can't the U.S. do this news? In a recent advisory opinion paper, the Brazilian Securities and Exchange Commission addressed the topic of crypto-based securities. In it, a lack of regulation is acknowledged and cryptocurrencies are defined as digitally represented assets safeguarded by cryptographic technology and transacted and stored by distributed ledger technology so basically you know just to get it over with where's the actual yeah so basically the government or the sec of brazil announced that they are going to be regulating cryptocurrencies some of them here's the here's the here's the kicker uh as securities but basically in their announcement they only announced that securities already deemed as securities that are digitized uh, would be overseen by the SEC there, you know, if they happen to go onto a blockchain or basically everything else that there was before. And if you don't fall into this category, you are not a security. Tokens that meet the new requirements uh, might be a digital version of shares. So if you are literally buying into a company, debentures, subscription bonuses, write coupons, subscription receipts, split certificates, Certificates of deposits of securities and debenture notes. Basically, they gave regulation one trillionth time quicker than the U.S. Basically, if your coin doesn't fall under any of those things, basically, if your if your coin or token is not a share or a portion of the actual company or wherever it might come from, guess what? Your coin is not a security. Can you imagine? The U.S. SEC ever. It's been seven years. Why did it take Brazil a day and a half? If you if you, if you've been missing all the um, Brazil cryptocurrency news over the last couple of months, not only have they adopted crypto, and some of their uh, cities are also n n now have crypto on their like on their books. 
uh, but also cryptocurrencies are, are legal there. There are thousands thousands of companies who are holding crypto in Brazil, and they said they were going to give regulations, and, 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 and here it is. Can you imagine? Can you imagine if, if, if the SEC had mentioned in 2017 we have to regulate this, and then by spring 2018 we already had regulation? No, of course not. No, no, no. Isn't it a shame? Think of all the other countries who've already done this. Imagine a world where there's no longer confusion as to if a cryptocurrency is a security or not. One of the things that I read earlier, apparently, allegedly, I was not in the room. Allegedly, one of the things that the SEC has stated uh, against Ripple uh, as to why XRP is a security in the SEC's eyes is because the SEC has deemed that XRP is a portion of the company Ripple. Like, actually, like, they, they said outright, allegedly, from what I read, uh, that they think that it is a representation of a portion of the company. I don't know anyone out there who holds XRP who has ever received a, a shareholder letter or anything stating that they had any say anywhere in that company. Can you imagine... Also in the news, which ties directly into it, it says U.S. lawmaker says crypto regulation from the SEC is needed now. This is also someone who we've never heard of. This isn't a you know a a a you know a a uh, retake, a rematch. This isn't some human being who we've heard from before talking about this. This is a. Hey, brand new senator, for those of you who have missed the news in the last month, there have been at least 13 uh, people coming forward in a bipartisan manner, might I add, uh, to basically say the SEC needs to stop what they're doing and give over control to the CFTC because the SEC has no idea what they're doing and they're trying to control too many things at one time. Seven years. Remember how I, remember how I, I used to always make that joke? And it wasn't really even a joke. It's just kind of sad. Like whenever we would get news about the original bit license, like in order to be able to do things with cryptocurrencies in New York State, I think it took six years to get that. How how does it take any human being six years to look through an application, to write up paperwork, to hit the print button and mail it to someone? You could, I'm certain you could have walked from New York to California back and forth at least 25 times and it would still be under no of course of course it would still be under seven years logically and within all that time no one from the SEC has put forth any actual real cryptocurrency regulation like they've been saying over and over imagine shouting at the top of a hill that all these coins are securities, all these coins are evil, all these coins are doing something or are bad for the American public. And then you still don't give any information as to why you get these companies in trouble. And even more so, here's, here's always the kicker for me. The, the people who had exposure to these unregistered securities, they're not going to see any of that money that the SEC got. That money goes in the SEC's pocket. Anyway, um, I'm still giving it about two or three years. I, I think we're going to have to see a $100,000 Bitcoin before the SEC even goes, well, you know, yeah, sure, it's time. I, I, I think America has to be left behind in the market because I assume a large portion of the mindset for the SEC is they believe that they're a market maker and they believe that they make the market move, which they do, usually down because of corruption. But anyway, that's the... Brazilian SEC has released uh, rules and regulations as to what constitutes a security for a cryptocurrency in their country, and the U.S. has not. Oh, sorry, news. Yeah. Let's move on. As always, a very special thank you to my Patreon supporters. GBU Wally, Dotha Diddy, Manny Cryptos, Crypto Gambino, Bubble Mode, How's Life Austin, Auspicious Agile, and Blockchain Jamie Saad, Blockchain Simplified, and let's move on, Empire Queen, 
Oh, Roman, Geba, Bitcoin, Ben Arachno, Dave, Tony, and Broski, the Dealer's Den, Captain Something in the Z Way, Lay, Mo Barazi, VB Nerd 21, Miguel Grolay, Lauren De Silva, Quoted Biddy, Troy Allgood, Space Case, Need a Miracle, Pantor Noster, Navarro Williams, Utopia 569, Moonman High, XRP, Martin Stoyo, Nostromo, John Sarson, The Animal Reader, A Bibliophobia. Isn't that a, a fear of books? Okay, Todd Mullis. Adam Grasick, Wise Night Owl, 242 to the World, Bankroll Network, Crypto Artist, Cold E3D, Setsuna, Richie Rich the Third, Paxis, Nick Mangialavori, Jim Gardner, Jeremy Fox, Minting Coins, Yes to Crypto, Bodie McBoatface, any weird name, Anytime Fitness Monks Corner Staff, Bake Me a Cake, Tigger Macho Nisa, On Crypto with Lionel and Crayola Michelle, URL. Thank you all very, very much for your continued support. Thank you to everyone who is a member of the channel. Thank you to everyone who has liked, commented, or subscribed either here on the Travel Channel or on Money Rules. Thank you to everyone who continuously leaves 1337 as a comment. I do appreciate it. I actually like to see it as well. I don't know why. Maybe it's just like nostalgia from the good old days. At the moment, Bitcoin is currently at 19593 it went up by sixteen hundred dollars in one day. It just <laughs> here's the dip for those of you who were who were wondering. Ethereum is currently up by three point three percent. Binance Coin is up by three point one nine. XRP is up by nine percentile of points. Cardano is up by four. Solana is up by five. Dogecoin is up by four. Matic Polygon is up by ten percent as well. What what coins are everyone currently bullish on? I'm trying to. Hmm, how do I say this? There's a couple of things that I'm constantly looking at. I'm really, this is not financial advice. I'm really looking into Matic, into Algorand, and what was the other one? I don't remember the name of the other one. Mainly Polygon because it is the scaling feature that we've all wanted for Ethereum for a very long time. Uh, there's tons of metaverse projects and other projects in general that are all moving on to Matic. The usage of it is continuous every single day. It is instant, instantaneous transactions for less than one cent or sometimes even free transactions, especially if you're interacting with uh, uh, NFTs. And what was the other thing? Algorand, they have a huge partnership with FIFA and there's a whole bunch of other big companies who are also announcing using them as well. And it's like... Just trying to follow those trends, at least right now. Shiba Inu is up by 7% as well. Shiba Inu terrifies me. Because I'm I'm really, I'm really, I, I keep looking at the price and I'm really afraid of it being like Dogecoin 2.0. I'm really afraid of it hitting like one cent and then like three cents. And then realizing that I didn't have enough cents to buy it when it was this low. I, I, I keep wondering, there's so many coins, I have so many question marks. Especially during like the period of us, you know, falling down continuously in price. A lot of these coins have held their own. They haven't really moved or like extra collapsed comparatively to many other coins. Uniswap is up by 13 percentile points. Avalanche is ironically up by 6%. Chainlink is up by 5. Cosmos is up by 7. Ethereum Classic is up by 9.3 percentile points as well. Well, Algorand is up by 9%. Quant is up by 19% at the same exact time. Luna Classic is up by 3. VeChain Thor is up by 5.9. Is it still called VeChain Thor? I only see VeChain here, but the, the T is still there, so I call it Thor. Flow is up by 5.8. Filecoin is up by 6 percentile points. Apecoin is up by 5% as well. Anything crazy? Uh, Mana and Sand are by 5 and 7% as well. Aave's up by 7 percentile points. Yeah, could be a good Friday. I do hope that you have all enjoyed. I hope you all have a... It is Friday, right? Yes, it's Friday. Woo. Hope you all have a great Friday. I hope it goes by quick. I hope your boss lets you leave work early. I hope something happens that makes you find money in the street or you find money somewhere that you did not have money. Treat yourself to something nice tonight. Like nothing expensive and like nothing, you know, not like $400 like... Go eat out with a friend or something like that. Like, go to a nice little cute restaurant you wanted to go to for a while. Have a couple of laughs. Go back home. Watch a good movie. It's Halloween season, so I'm trying to watch a, a horror movie every single night. 
it's not great for my nightmares. It's just not, it's not, it's not at all. It's, I just, you know, wondering why I keep having nightmares. I do hope you all enjoyed. Hope you all are having a great day, great morning, great afternoon, a great evening, wherever you are, wherever the heck you might be. I do hope it's absolutely fantastic. Thank you all once again for watching, listening, commenting, and or supporting. And I will most certainly be talking to you all soon. See you.